Okay, there we go. I forgot that I had split it, the audio channels, into separate channels, so I could, like, adjust them on the fly. But it means that only, there can only be one, uh, stream track. So I put the mic back on. Hello, boys. How are we? Play Fortnite? Ew. Epic. As in, like, epic games. Have you guys literally just been fucking sitting in, like, the chat waiting? The whole time? Or was that a meme? <laughs> no way. Hell yeah. Fortnite no build? I might be able to do Fortnite no build. Let's say that's shocking, I'll be honest. There's no way you've been there for one and three quarter hours. Alright. Let's get into it, shall we? Before you guys devolve any further with your gremlin brains. Um... Do I watch Markiplier? Yeah. Dude, Jake, I thought you were home, like, later. I'm sorry. And also, I kind of legit fell asleep. Um, I was, I was playing Kingdom Hearts, waiting, and then uh, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna have a lie down and watch some YouTube. And then I fell asleep. It's <laughs> just... Um, but yeah, do I go with the preset archetype, or do I make my own? I don't know, honestly. Give it a look. Uh... Oh shit. Let's buff that up. I... I'm gonna go with that. I guess. Four intellect, four psyche, two physique, two motorics. So I'm smart and emotionally intelligent, but I'm weak and not very dexterous. Hey Thunder, how are you? Just like real life. Fuck you. Fuck you, nerd. Uh... Let's do Oh, fuck. Wait, hold on. Never mind. How do I un... Oh, okay, I can just look at the others. Um... Okay. Zero Psyche, I can't talk to women. I have... a girlfriend, thank you? Who I can talk to... okay. You know? 
I have brain rot, so that doesn't help. Oh shit, I don't know. Honestly, I think... But do I talk to her? Um, like I said, brain rot. Dude, no way. Honestly, that's huge. If it was actually... If it was actually Alex. Alright, you know what? Yeah. Let's keep Volition as our signature skill, I think. <laughs> oh my god! Oh. Nothing. Only warm, primordial blackness. Your conscious ferments in it. No larger than a single grain of malt. You don't have to do anything anymore. Ever. Never, ever. Never, ever, ever? Never, ever, ever, baby. An inordinate amount of time passes. It is utterly void of struggle. No ex-wives are contained within it. What was that about the ex-something? An awareness creeps up on you. A mass lies hidden in your dead angle. Soaking in some lurid acidic sauce. It's bloated and shameful. A ball of meat surrounding you. This is a terrible line of questioning, and it will only lead to more awareness of the meat thing. No, I, I wanted to know about the X something. X love, X tenderness. It is foolish of you to resurface to the loss. Not after all the damage you've suffered to get here. Some of it irreversible. Stay. Sail with me through the abyss of Pelagic Zone. No, I want to get off now. I like pain and burning light and wanting things from people who don't want to give them to me. Do you really? I do. Let me off. You wouldn't like it if I told you what was back there. Why do you think you had to bludgeon yourself into oblivion? Or did you not sense yourself marinating? Poured so much on yourself. Got a bit carried away, did we, Chef? Wife took the superego in the divorce. Damn straight she did. Fear and apprehension. You should ask what's out there first. Uh... Wait. I did this to myself? Yes. Your one disco mother. Tell me, what's waiting for me? There's this giant ball there. An evil ape. An evil ape are juking it out on the ball. You're one of them. It's basically all just evil apes juking it out on a giant ball. How big is the ball? You can't even make out it's a ball when you're juking it out. It's that large. How small are the apes? Infinitesimally small. And this duking it out I keep hearing about. What's that? Fine for resources. It's just a stupid expression you picked up somewhere. The part of the presentation you want to take home with you is this. You have to beat the other evil apes in the face. Oh. That sounds like something I would like to do. Let's go! Somewhere in the sore, bloated man meat around you. A sensation. 
Like a fly to the ointment, your conscience stinks to air. The limbed and headed machine of pain and undignified suffering is firing up again. It wants to walk the desert, hurting, longing, dancing to disco music. You can take it. You're a champion. Damn straight I'm a fucking champion. Mother, help me. There's a head attached to my neck and I'm in it. Uh, no, I am not scared. I am a champion. The stench of liquor rises from your mouth, and with it, an ungodly headache. <laughs> Help! Someone! Cut my head off! It's trying to murder the rest of me! Uh... <laughs> Who am I? What sort of creature does this to their own mouth? A fiery streak penetrates your skull, trying to force your eyes open. It's a sound. A clarion call from hell. Somehow, you know what it is. A Caprice Kamehameha motor carriage. Big stretch for the morning. This magnum sized bottle of Commodore Red is empty. The necktie on the fan, yeah. <laughs> Looks like someone tore out the tape while the song was playing. This real the real tape player is on, rolling empty. Okay, that's pretty neat. Let's get my pants first, I guess. Crippling alcoholic passed out on the floor, half naked. Yep, that's... That's me, baby! You hear a jingle. Keys are clinking in the pocket of your flare-cut pants. I'ma fish them out. It says, whirling in racks, on the aluminium key ring. There is a single key on the ring. The number one is etched on it. It should open the door. Thank you, Perception. Savoir Fair. Ah, sneaking. <laughs> I see. That makes sense. Alright, let's try and get my tie. I don't have a shirt to fucking put on. Put this on. fan has two chain pull switches. One ends in a tiny fan, the other in a light bulb. A truly horrific necktie has somehow attached itself to one of the blades. Or has it been consigned there as punishment? You feel as though this creature is your friend and wants to reattach itself to your neck so that you may continue your adventures together in this strange world. <laughs> Thank you, Inland Empire. So if I take off my... my gaudy yellow pants, I'll have a better chance to just grab it right off. However... The blades come squeaking to a halt. There we go. It should be easier to reach the tie now. This is a white check. I may retry it. Cool. You reach out to I grab failed. the tie. Oh, but shit! This? Diffuse, radiating chest pain. Doom comes over you. I can grab my this chest. This is bad. Feels like sharp stones grinding in your chest and keeping you from moving. I'm having a fucking heart attack. For quite a long time. Still ongoing. Now is a good time to start worrying. Finally, the pressure recedes. You find yourself covered in cold sweat and trying not to move. Hoping it will keep you from dying. <laughs> so I... <laughs> I didn't get the tie and I suffered from a heart attack. Let's get my shirt. Thank you. Disco ass blazer. Hell yes, dude. If I take off my pants, that'll increase my sub affair. I'm hungover. I don't know if I want to pull this on the light bulb. Has two chain or 
Has it been consigned there as punishment? You feel as though oh, I actually need to put your points friend, into Savoy Fair and to wants fucking to reach right. itself to your neck so that you may continue your adventures together. I can't. Okay, in this right. strange it's world. Line, Bob. A terrible mistake. Turn the lights off immediately. You can practically feel the photons burning a hole in your brain. Bring it on! Your eyes burn with photosensitivity. It's not good. Oh, shit. I lost a health point! I can't get the tie! I actually can't get the tie right now. I need to come back to it later. You see bottles in the bathtub. Wine, beer, and sweet liqueurs. Well. White satin shirt. Thank you. I'm now mostly dressed. I'm not doing well. <laughs> I should have taken the pants off to help. Hangs above a bent and broken sink. In a fierce discharge of masculine energy, someone has ripped half the faucet off. Strings of fate have been severed? No. It's okay. We can come back. Hot water sprays from the base and steam covers the mirror. You cannot see yourself, just the outline of a man. Suddenly, you realize you have no memory of the face that awaits you there, underneath the soft vapor. Really? Nothing? Really? All recollection of the person you are, the people in your life, and even the world you're in has drowned in a sea of blood alcohol. This was no mere night of drinking. It was a deluge of world-ending proportions. I mean, I can always reload the save from the start of the game, right? I could always do that if we want the tie. <laughs> Yay, nay. We're sending it. As you slowly reach your hand towards the surface of the mirror. <laughs> I see. This is one of those things that I can't win, huh? Abort. You clearly have not thought this through. You won't like what you see there, and you will never unbecome it. <laughs> okay, my inland empire was not happy with me trying to see my face. Maybe I should touch it first, make sure there's nothing wrong with my face. Yeah, there is definitely something wrong with it. What? What's wrong? Where to even begin? There is the bloatedness, then the swollenness. It's like there's an upholstery of alcohol underneath your skin. I'm sorry, I touched my nose. Bet you are. Your nose feels like a small balloon in the middle of your face. It hurts when you honk it. It doesn't appear to be a particularly tiny nose either. Not with all the drinks it's absorbed for you. <laughs> absorbed, quote unquote. At least my tongue is okay. It's not. It's swollen and snail-like. Wriggling between your fingers. <laughs> Swipe the mirror. Behold. <laughs> Behold! A man! You have no idea who this thing is, do you? Of course I do. It's, um... Is it some kind of superstar? I think I'm a superstar. Dear Lord, help me. What is this? This is the face. Of a late stage alcoholic. Too late. You clearly have rigor mortis on your face. Or oh, wait, is that an expression? Are you trying to make an expression with that face? Why? I'm not making it. The, the face is making it itself. Please stop. No. It's horrible. You're scaring yourself. I'm not going to stop making that face. Fuck you. You can't, can you? It's like it's not even voluntary anymore. <laughs> You have worn that grin into your face, and now it won't come off. What does it even mean? What is the emotion you're trying to convey? Superstardom. I'm insinuating that I'm vaguely sympathetic. I think I'm sort of pulling it off too, in a sad has-been kind of way. There's some charm to it. Uh... I 
I mean, on a deep level, it's just an expression of pain, I think. Homeboy is not doing well. You are correct. I'm correct. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Dig deep in your mind to locate the source of the expression. Or I do an electrochemistry check, which I will almost definitely fail. Let's let's try uncover the source. Like the rest yep. of you, it comes from a bad place somewhere in the past. That's all you know for now. All right, let's, let's leave it be for now. <laughs> this fan has two. Oh, I want has my it tie. Been there as I should have taken off my pants to make it easier to grab the tie. Oh, there's a shoe there. Why is a shoe hanging on the coat rack? <laughs> I'm gonna take it off so I'm not walking around in one shoe. Uh, oh yeah, broken glass. The window stands broken in its frame. Cold wind blows in. The lights are on. Makes it easier to assess the damage. Sure, let's do it. The shards face outward. Whatever broke this window came from the inside. Did I break it with my own hands? A fine web of scarring covers the back of your right hand, but none of it is recent. What did this then? More likely a projectile than a held object. There are no fragments on the floor from pulling a tool back in after impact. Uh, let's assess the size of the impact. It is too large for a bullet, yet too small for a piece of furniture. You're looking for something heavy and larger than your fist. The single green shoe you found fits the hole almost as well as your foot. It would have also been heavy enough if thrown with force. Congratulations. <laughs> you smashed the window with your own shoe. Now you only have one. If you're lucky, you could still find the other one on the balcony outside. The door to it should be outside your room. I should go and get that shoe. A cool wind gushes in. Your toes curl up from the cold. How much XP do I need to increase my sub warfare? A hundred? Oh, it's gonna be a while before I can try and get that tie, gamers. There's the door to the outside. There it is. What, what's this? There's something on the table. What is it? Coins! Yoink. 0.4 real. Excellent. People are more forgiving to persons of power like police officers. Excellent. The smell of the sea makes you dizzy. A gust of briny wind washes over you. And I got my shoes back. And they also lower my Savoy fare. So I now have zero Savoy fare. There they both are. Two identical shoes. Both copiously green and indiscriminately snakeskin. Reunited on your feet. Dude, and the writing is like fantastic as well. Like two baby crocodiles. <laughs> Thank you, conceptualization. How do they fit? Good. They're balanced. Comfy. Feels like the only good thing about you right now. Truth be told. It's a bit mean. Fuck you. Fuck you, composure, asshole. I need to heal. I have one hit point out of two. Because I had a heart attack and then blinded myself. What's the date? The calendar says it's March. The year is 51. Hello, officer. Hello, lady. The young woman raises a cigarette to her lips. Officer? Am I military personnel? Uh, no. She seems perplexed by your question. 
There's only one solution to this. You're a businessman. <laughs> Wait, I know. I'm a businessman. Chief executive officer, right? Then why did you call me an officer? I think we're going to take the more uh, moderate approach. Because you're a police officer, sir. That makes more sense. You're shitting me. I'm not. Unless you've been shitting us all this time. She takes another drag of the cigarette. All You've this been time? Here for three days. On official police business, no less. And, um. What business is that? Couldn't say. In truth, so far, mostly drinking. <laughs> Why don't I remember being a cop or anything else? Could it be because of the drinking? Holy shit! <laughs> Who in their right mind would let me be an officer of the law? Don't be so harsh on yourself. They let almost anyone be a police officer. A glib remark. Don't let it stand. Assert yourself. Actually, um, actually, I can see why they would entrust me with the law. I have the right character. Uh, I'm just gonna let it go. I'm not gonna be Retreat a is dickhead. not a winning tactic. Fuck you, authority. <sighs> hey, Lucky! Hey, bro. Good to see you. Let's... Let's try the expression on her. The words have already left your mouth. I want to have fuck with you. <laughs> what was that? That's not even how words are used. What did you say? Come on. Say it again. No. I don't want to. Come on, man. Freddy, please. One more time. I said, I want to have fuck with you. <laughs> Goddamn right you did. You crazy asshole, you. What kind of cop are you? Oh, bro. Superstar cop. I can no longer deny it. Okay, that's cool. Or, if I can just maybe ask you to elaborate on that superstardom a tiny bit? <laughs> Jesus Christ, half the options are just very self-demeaning, aren't they? Uh, it means I'm a bloated old drunk with sideburns and disco pants. If I don't have a joke up my sleeve, it's on me. Or, I sincerely think I'm a superstar. It's a theory I'm developing. I don't know. Pfft. Well, that's brutally honest and then just like crazy. I have certainly been entertained. Thank you. Whatever you are, you should stick to it. Otherwise. She extinguishes a cigarette. It's gonna suck for you later when you have to interrogate me. Who the fuck signed, made an account called Horrific Necktie 327? <laughs> no, dude, there's no way. The necktie's back. I, I, I didn't want to. I suffered a heart attack and then I couldn't get it. Also, we're ignoring the fact that we're going to have to interrogate this this woman later. And for the record, no. I didn't do it. Okay, thank you. That's very... convincing. Looks like she left a nice long stub in the ashtray. It's still smoking. <laughs> oh my god, did a woman smoke this? I didn't mean to! <laughs> <laughs> I 
This is the weekend edition of the satirical newspaper, Trump Le Monde. The door is closed. Isn't this where she just walked into? Why the fuck would I, like, immediately disturb her again? Dude, I wish I could go back for you, horrific necktie. Please. You have to forgive me. I can't. I need a point in Savoy Fair. This fan has all. I can't. I fucked it up. As punishment. I had a heart attack and you then I couldn't get it. <laughs> I goofed. My motorix was not very high. Take the I I will when I when I go back for it, I'm going to have to. I can't believe my first skill point is going to be fucking Savoy Fair just so I can get the necktie. But I want the necktie. Everybody's- I know, I don't want to be Tyler's! We could be Disco right now. I want to be Disco! Summer door, closed for the winter. <laughs> this is where the lyrics would be. Thank you. A big old karaoke mic, just waiting for someone to sing into it. We do have the necktie in chat, that's right. The speaker is connected to the radio. The music is seasoned with static. You should totally sing karaoke head. The first chance you get. Your emotions need to be expressed. People need to know your vast oceanic soul. My soul is immense. Utterly. And it needs to be heard through a PA system. <laughs> by other people. This goes well with a theory that I'm developing that I'm a down on my luck superstar person. <laughs> sure. Who is mistakenly identified as a cop for his prominent jawline? Yes, sounds likely. You should probably go on stage and pose for a moment when you're done with this thought. See if it works. <laughs> What should I sing when it comes to it? You have not yet stumbled on the right lamentation, but it's out there. It'll come to you. You will wreak havoc with it. Don't worry. I was thinking I could sing something happy, get the people going. Lamentation sounds good. They'll really get a gauge on my soul with that. Serves them right. Wipe that smirk off their face with your sad, <laughs> tragic song. Who's laughing now? No one. You have to find something tragic to sing first, though. <laughs> this feels right. You belong here. Hell yeah. Damn straight I do. Is that a taxidermied, like, goose? A man in his late twenties stands behind the counter inspecting a stuffed seabird. As you approach, he gives you a sideways glance, then looks down again. That was disdain in his eyes. Even now he is purposely ignoring you. Looks like he's not a fan. I sense you're not a fan of mine. Oh no, you're a hero. A real hero cop. Could the massive property damage upstairs have anything to do with this? I don't know. Could it? You're being sarcastic. Or did you ride in, take the body down, solve the murder, and not trash my hostel room? Oh my god, I did all those things? No, you see, actually, you didn't. You haven't done anything even remotely useful since you got here. What have I been doing then? Have you seen me around? No, I haven't seen you around. I'm not always here. He looks down again and keeps plucking at the bird. A competent work of taxidermy. The white and brown seabird lies among piles of coasters and drying mugs. One of its wings broken. The man is trying to mend it. I'm assuming we did that. Looks like the bird was ripped off the shield that was used to mount it. Most likely on a wall. This is the great skewer. 
The seabird is the symbol for the discovery of the Insulindian Isola, the part of the world you are in right now. Something about it makes you feel bitter. Who is we? We is we. We're a collective. <laughs> He's going to tell us that we ripped it off last night or something. What happened to the bird? Look, your buddy is over there. He looks at the doors, where a man in a bomber jacket is tapping his foot on the floor. Why don't you go and talk to him, okay? Do you mean my buddy? He pretends not to hear you, concentrating on the bird instead. Are you the bartender? No, I'm not the bartender. I'm the cafeteria manager. What's the difference? I have three cafeterias to manage. Three. Sylvie tends the bar here, not me. I'm only standing in. Where did the Sylvie go? She just, you know. His eyes dart from left to right. This man isn't lying, but he is hiding something. She just, what? So now you're a cop. Oh, forget it. <laughs> Thanks, man. Very helpful. Helpful stuff. The menu has been wiped clean. Only the word Monday is written on it. A woman's hand wrote yesterday's menu. Today's starts in a man's handwriting. Interesting. Nosifed. Yoink. This is a water cooler. A large bubble is rising to the surface. The door is bolted. A sign reads, Kitchen reserved for personnel until one o'clock. The soft purr of an electric juicer comes from the kitchen. Someone is working. A sign reads, Mess hall reserved for union members. Doors open at four. Let's talk to Kim. Our boy. The boy, in fact. A bespeckled man in an orange bomber jacket is tapping his foot on the floor. Looks like he's waiting for someone. You. As you approach, he narrows his eyes and extends his hand in greeting. If an assault were launched on this building right now, if the windows came crashing down and the whole world descended upon you, this man would hurl himself in death's way to save you. You are sure of this, but why? Hold on. Who is he to me? He is your half-brother. A spirit decor, so he's another cop. I know this, but... Shake his hand. Hello. I'm Kim Kitsuragi, Lieutenant, Precinct 57. You must be from the 41st. He is the goat. We fucking love Kim. You realize... He's waiting for your name. This is your chance to come up with a really good name for yourself. Get creative. Conceptualize. <laughs> Let's do it. Invent a name for ourselves. Concentration makes you squint your eyes. Your name should be deep gold and orange. Like a forest fire looming on the horizon. But mixed with the stench of liquor rising from your breath. You're two steps closer to it, but there are still many to go. I don't really know my name. Okay, then. He processes the information, then disregards it. It looks like we had a little skidding error on Sunday. Saturday too, actually. Have you had time to talk to the manager here? What he means is, he has been trying to meet up with you for two days, but you have been otherwise occupied. You mean him? Uh, yeah, I just talked to him. If you don't mind, we should talk to him again. Ask him for a rundown of the area. Now that I'm here as well. I understand the scene is out back, right? It also wouldn't hurt to assure him the police are finally here. In full force, I mean. Have you mapped out the initial interviews? I have not. Okay, we'll have time for that after we take a look at the coroner's case. Have you removed the dead body from the tree? Look, man, you know, yeah. Does that mean the body is no longer in the tree? No. So, the body is still in the tree. This is the first time you detect a weariness in the lieutenant's voice. 
It is obvious he would have preferred for the body to no longer be in the tree. Where it has been hanging for seven days straight. <laughs> we should go there as soon as we are done talking to the owner. But I can't remember anything. I can see you drank last night and the night before, and that you are still drunk now. But I have seen officers go through worse, much worse. If you need something for your headache, there is a general store nearby. But as I said, the dead body should be our number one concern. Let's get going then. After you, officer. If you're about to embark on an investigation, shouldn't you have a badge? Wait, shouldn't I have a badge or something? You mean you don't have a badge? <laughs> it wasn't on me when I woke up. Losing your identification card is a serious matter. My vehicle has a shortwave. You can use it to report your badge missing. I advise you to try to locate it as quickly as possible. But getting the body down should still take precedence. Lieutenant Kitsuragi is now in your party. You can talk to him whenever by interacting with him. Hell yeah. Kitsuragi the goat. Our boy. The royal pinball machine is unplugged. Hello, madam. Hello, sweetie. The elderly woman turns to you with a smile. Wait, who's sweetie? <laughs> Does that mean you like me? Who's sweetie? Why, you are, officer. Hmm. Maybe I am. And have you found anyone to be sweet to? She smiles conspiratorially. I don't really want to talk about that right now. I'm sorry if I was being overly familiar. I, I know we've only just met. Oh, I didn't mean to... Oh. You must forgive me. I'm getting so scatterbrained. I completely forgot to introduce myself. She slaps herself on the forehead. I'm Lena. My husband Morel and I are staying with our friend Gary just down the street, but I come here for tea when they're away. Her eyes glitter over the rims of her glasses as she looks up, smiling. This Lena is wacky enough for the Motley Crew. Hire her on the spot. <laughs> How would you like to roll with me, homeboy? She's in a wheelchair. I didn't mean to make Grandma feel bad. I would... Oh... Uh, oh man. <laughs> How would you like to roll with me? Whatever do you mean? Her eyes light up. I want you to be my wheelchair partner in fighting crime, ridding backyards of corpses, catching sequence killers. That's true. How do you expect me to raise when I can't get the tie? Sequence killers? Oh my. She sounds but impressed. you already have a partner, sweetie? A partner who needs you to help him get a corpse down from a tree. <laughs> Kim, of course! I forgot I had you! Oh my god. I know, I know, but they're also side mysteries. Sequence killers and forays into the paranatural. I am gonna come back for the killer necktie, the horrific necktie. You're probably right, Kim. It seems to me that you lucked out with your partner. He has the look of an upstanding officer of the law. Someone you can lean on, and sweetie, you are looking unsteady. Oh, oh, she's so nice. Of course, dear. Good luck with your case. She gives you a small wave. Oh yeah, there they're all the... Old. <laughs> the one old game I still have saved. Alright. Let's uh, talk to the barkeep again. Or the manager, sorry. The man with the unimpressive beard notices you approaching. He drops the ledger he was holding and turns to the lieutenant. Bro got fucking roasted. Mr. Gart, right? You run this place. Yes. I am Kim Kitsuragi from Prison 57. This is an inter-district investigation, so joining me from Prison 41... 
he looks to you, realizing he still doesn't know your name. What is gold and orange like a forest fire, but smells like liquor? Are you kidding me? No, man, help me out. Kim is about to say something, let him. Right. <laughs> now, I know it took us a while to arrive at the scene. It also took you a while to call us and report the dead body. It was you who placed the call, yes? No, I only just got here. It was probably Sylvie who called you. She usually works the bar here. I'm only temporarily taking over her duties. Do you have her number? As a matter of fact, I do. He looks behind a pile of coasters, finds a slip of paper, and hands it to the lieutenant. You said you just got here. From where? Are you a local? What, of Martinez? No. I live in Jamrock. I only sometimes come here to keep an eye on the place. This is just one of the many, many cafeterias I manage. Homeboy, you manage three. But you still know your way many, around, many. yes? In case we need directions. Yes, I know where some things are, but as I said, I don't live here. I just used to work here. And I'm not going to start working here again, if that's what you think. I didn't imply that. Detective. He probably means this is where you step in and ask your questions. <laughs> right then, questions. I got this. His face expresses profound doubt in your having this. <laughs> Where exactly is the body? Behind this building, there's a courtyard. They hoisted him up on a tree there. And how do we get there then? That's easy. See that door there? First you exit through that. Then to your right, you should see a big hole in the fence. A really big one. You can get to the courtyard through there. No need for the keys. The hole is big enough for the Franco-Nigerian cavalry to fit through. Does he want you to feel guilty of making that hole? It's implied in his voice. Where did, why did Sylvie go away? Haven't you asked me that already? What is it with you and this woman? She has nothing to do with this. No, before I asked you where, now I'm asking you why she left. Okay, you got me. She went away because of the dead body out back. And because I asked for her number. Ugh. That's why Sylvie went away. I hope you appreciate that. Bro. <laughs> Thank you. The lieutenant says, he opens his little notebook at the cover. The number is safely tucked away in a small pocket. Didn't go well. I asked an employee out. She didn't want to come, but felt obliged to. It was a bad idea. Now, what is so goddamn fascinating about that for you? It's got nothing to do with the lynching. This stuff gets on my nerves. I am a feminist. <laughs> I guess I like to be thorough. Everything has something to do with everything. Good for you. Uh, was there something else? I'd like to get back to what I was doing. <laughs> who killed him? I don't know who killed him. I'm not the police. That's your job. Did you kill him? What are you, crazy? Of course I didn't kill him. That's all. Let's go. Not so fast. You owe me 130 real. I have zero subway fare. What's real? Oh, excuse me. You owe me 130 real. Pronounces the R with a mock aristocratic accent. The IIR, or Interisolary Real, is the global reserve currency. Whatever part of the world you're in right now, it's safe to assume he means you owe him some money. I have two. I have two Savoy Fair. I'm going to fail that role. Oh, I understand. You mean I owe you money. Wow, you're a genius. Yes, that's right. Money. You owe this establishment 130 real. He points to the red ledger on the counter. What do I owe this place for? Let's see. He Three nights at a tariff of 20 real comes to 60 real. Then there's the window you annihilated. The hole in the window was the first thing I saw when I came to work. So don't try to tell me you didn't. That will be 40 real in damages. Another thing you've annihilated is half the bar. You've run a tab of 30 real. Actually, more, but we'll round it down to 30 for your hard work maintaining the stability and order of Revachol. That's 60 plus 40 plus 30 equals 130 real. And yes, real is still money. But what exactly is money? 
What are you, a philosopher? <laughs> Since I woke up, I have trouble remembering even the most basic concepts of reality. Actually, I might be. Money is what grown-up people use to pay for things. Things like this hostel room, or, or eight bottles of potent blend, and nine packs of royal extra. We use it for everything, really. Is this money? <laughs> Proceed, but don't show him the coins. They're yours. Yes, it is. That's 10 plus 10 plus 20 equals 40. I'm now down to 90, right? No, you see, that's 40 cents. Cents are a form of currency 100 times smaller than the real. I'm not even going to take this. Come back when you have 130 real. Okay. The cafeteria manager stands silently, looking at the coppers on the counter before him. Isn't it evil? The order of magnitude between what is asked of a person and what they have. <laughs> Darkness rides. With money, you could buy another <laughs> men's fashion model colorful tie. Oh man, I wanted a peanut. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> There's a shuffle of nylon as Lieutenant Kitsuraki looks for something in the pockets of his orange bomber. That's cop four. I haven't offered to pay because I don't have any money either. What happens now? I'm sorry, but he has to pay. I can't let him stay here any longer if he doesn't. If he doesn't have the money by tonight, then... It does go hard as fuck. Officer, maybe you are better off working this from home for now. You live in Jamrock, right? It's not that far away. Uh... I don't remember where my home is. Officer, you really need to take this up with your station. I have a shortwave radio in my car. Call them. Ask for assistance. We have to get this investigation started now. Good luck. The man wants to say something, but then thinks better of it. By the way, where is home? The address is coming up blank, and this place sure isn't it. I really don't remember. But you've been at this hostel cafeteria for only three nights. Where were you before? You had to be somewhere. Far away? In time or space? Both. That doesn't sound like somewhere you can stay if you run out of money. Could I trace the way back somehow? To the exact street, the exact number on a building? You can try. Run some addresses in your head when you get the time. Maybe a street or an apartment will appear. I got a thought. Let's rewind. Let's trace your drunken steps back home. Jump across the raised channel bridge southwest of here. Fall over. Get up. Get off the asphalt in 20 minutes. Shuffle your feet through courtyards, scaring little children. Go into the great raised motor act, motor tract, the 881, until you reach Le Domaine Amanon in North Jamrock. The streets are frozen this time of year, caked with ice. Walk down Main to Perdition. There's a side alley there, and your footprints are in the mud. Start internalizing it. Factual memory returns. Alright, I guess time to talk to the coppers on the short range. Or the short wave, sorry. A heap of snow melts in the wheelbarrow. Street sign reads, Fuck the police. Pigs go home. The street name is illegible. Damn, look at this beast, this monster. Before you stands a motor carriage. The bodywork is covered in blue and white livery, bearing the number 57. Vapor emanates from the large engine on the back of the vehicle. It hasn't had time to cool off yet. This must be the infernal machine that tore you from oblivion. The Caprice Kinema motor carriage. <laughs> Let's open the door. In the cabin, you are welcomed by a set of steering levers, a radio microphone on a hook, a pull-out toolbox under the seat, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. 
Uh, pull out the pull-out toolbox. A metallic drawer slides out from under the seat and clicks into place. The tools inside are neatly organized. Take what you need, officer. It's going to be a long case. I'm not protective of my tools, like some men are. He's clearly a little protective of his tools. But what can you do? Work is work. Let's take the flashlight. It's robust, weatherproof, and well-made. Police issue, blue. Lets you see things in the dark you would otherwise miss. Take the chain cutters. The handles are long and sleek. Snap, snap, go the cutters in your hand. And the pry bar. The pry bar feels nice and cold in your hand. Heavier than you'd think. Useful for opening all sorts of doors and lids. Push in the pull-out toolbox. The pull-out toolbox slides back into its nest. Preheater gauge casts a warm glow on the steering levers and the radio on its hook. Time to pick up the radio, I guess. The frequency tabler lights up and the green button labeled Prime Line glows like a feline eye. And then you hear something. The soft purr of electrical kittens. Radio waves cast far and wide over the metropolis. A woman's voice greets you through the static. This is Precinct 57. Hello, Lieutenant. How may I assist you? Hello, Alice. Please assist our colleague from the 41st Precinct here. I'm putting him on. Hi, Alice. This is the officer from the 41st Precinct speaking. Nice to meet you. This is Officer Alice Demetri, Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Could you connect me to the 41st Precinct? I have something I need to report. Just a second, officer. She puts you on hold, static crackling softly like a bonfire. After a while, you hear an old man greet you from the phone, from the radio. His rattly voice is oddly familiar. 10 to 10 five. This is 41st. Come in. Over. A scrawny old man sits in a dusty cubicle, smoking, with a large white rectangle sewn on his vest. In front of him is a box-shaped apparatus with an array of wires and antennas. The radio switchboard. The man uses relay code. You got this. You're a cop, and cops know relay code. Ten four station forty one. I've got a uh, urgent business over. Ten four message received. Ten five relay message. What's your status? Over. Just reporting in. Over. Ten eighteen. State your message, sir. Uh, I need to report my badge missing. 10-9, over. Uh, my badge? I can't find it anywhere. Basically, it's gone. 10-4, message received. This is a very serious situation. I need to 10-22 the captain, over. Is it him? What does he want? Says he lost his badge and needs to report it. He what? He lost his badge? Hey, who is this? This is communication officer Jules Pidieu, sir. Over. No, the other one. You mean your partner? Over. My partner. What is he saying? <clears throat> He's asking who you are. I'm his goddamn partner. It's your partner, satellite officer Dittmar, sir. Over. Did he lose his memory along with his fucking badge? The man in the background sounds like he's losing his patience. Who lost his badge? Dick fucking Mullen. Who do you think? It's Officer Dick Mullen from the bestseller Dick Mullen and the Lost Identity. He says, fighting off laughter. Dick Mullen is not your name. It's the name of a fictional detective who would not lose his badge. Defend yourself. Immediately. They're laughing at you. Ha ha, officer has lost his badge. Ha ha, like I'm the first cop to ever misplace his badge. <laughs> Can't we just move on? I want to get it reported and be done with it. He says this has probably happened to other policemen before him and laughs uh, sarcastically. Oh god damn it. Is he fucking kidding? The whole station's gonna be dicked for this. Satellite officer Vikmar is wondering if you might be joking and adds that this tarnishes the reputation of the entire station. Over. Mullen dicked us. Can't we just move on? I want to get it reported and be done with it. 
Then for I hear you, officer. I'm just going to make a note here that you are in pursuit of your misplaced badge. Over. Fuck me! Mac, come here! You've got to hear this! Dick Mullen lost his badge! What's going on? Supercop here lost his badge. He lost his what now? His badge. He lost his goddamn fucking badge. Could you all please just stop saying lost his badge for a moment? He asked you to please stop saying he lost his badge. Why? Did he find it? The room at the other end of the line erupts in volcanic laughter. Sergeant Person was wondering if you found your badge yet. Over. Um, you don't have a comeback. Sorry. It's hard to think like this. He's not replying. Looks like he's still looking for it. <laughs> Enough for now. I have other things to discuss. Ten nine, come again. I didn't get that. Over. The animated conversation in the back is making it difficult for him to hear you. New heights even for Captain Sober. Ask him. <laughs> Ask him if he's lost his gun too. Sergeant Person wants to know if you lost your gun too. Oh, Over. Shit. Check your pockets. Check your... Holy fuck. You don't know where it is, do you? I don't have my gun?! No. It's gone. It's not fucking on you. 10-9, come in, officer. Did you get my question? We were wondering about your gun. Over. <laughs> fuck. Uh... Shit. <laughs> Convince them that I didn't lose my gun? Ah, uh, let's try it. Lying over the phone, it's easy. Just say it like it's the truth, and then it becomes it. No, of course I didn't lose my he gun. He didn't. Thank God for that. That would have been a nightmare. I don't even want to imagine the poor prick who has to relay that kind of news to the captain. <laughs> oh, shit. Losing his badge is bad enough. Tell him to find it, and fast. We can have some gangbanger running around with it. We're all glad to hear you've not lost your gun, officer. Do you need further assistance? Over. I, I can confess. Uh, this might sound odd, but there's personal details I'd like to discuss. Big Dramas uh, doesn't even cover it. Okay, 10 4, sir. I hear you. Relay your question. Over. Wait. Before you say anything stupid, think it through. What's there to think about? You're going to be looking at a straitjacket if you tell everyone you lost your memory. Be smart about this. Ask if he's there alone. 10 4, sir. I'm not hearing your question. What? What is it? He's still on the line? He wants to verify the information on his badge. But of course, it says Dick Mullen, High General of the Revachonian Cavalry Force. Tell him to stop wasting time. What do you need, sir? Over. <sighs> Fuck's sake. And this was just this. Over. I'm in dire need of financial assistance. 10 4, I hear you. I don't have the authority to grant your request, but. What does he want now? Sean, fuck you. He's asking for money. Is he fucking kidding? I don't think he is. Don't give that asshole anything. He's just gonna drink it all. Right. Uh, that's a negative on the additional sound, sir. Over. <laughs> it is paramount to the investigation that you grant me more money. Jean is a problem. He says it's important to the case. He isn't getting a red cent. Request denied, sir. Over. Okay, I heard you. No fun. Anything else, sir? 10-10, over. Ten, over. Roger that. 10-10. Ten, ten. Over and out. I am a problem. Yes. No, yeah. I knew exactly where you were going with that. Yeah, I'm a problem. Static ends with a loud click, then everything is silent. 18 yeah. kilometers to the south in the 41st Precinct's relay booth. A small crowd has gathered around communication officer Jules Oldboy Pudier, around a dozen cops. The small room is filled with cigarette smoke, a buzz with laughter when officer Judith Minow enters. Her left arm is in bandages and her hair trimmed short. What is going on here? Did something happen? She asked, startled. Jean Vicmer. 
turns to her and says, What happened is my partner made contact, and it's not good. He's lost his badge. He seemed confused, delirious even. He stops to reflect. Mac, the torso Torsen, is finger-fucking his fist, laughing hoarsely and apparently telling some dirty story to his partner, Chester McLean, near the entrance. Yeah, Mullen was fucked, all right. Sounded fucking drunk to me. Yeah, Mac's right. This was some gnarly shit there. I mean, before he started begging for money, it was... Why, why, does he, why does he sound like he's on the radio still? Enough! None of this is funny. It's fucking sad. That's what it is. He's a cop. He's one of us, goddamn this. We must help him. But no, it looks down at her neatly polished black shoes. There is a quiet firmness to her voice when she speaks. Yeah? How do you fucking plan to do that, huh? Get him off the drink? Go jogging with him in the morning and get him on car juice? He's a lost man. I just know we can't give up on him when he's at his weakest. He wouldn't. Crowd in the room has started fidgeting uncomfortably. Someone's trying to slip out unnoticed. Mac, man the door. You know what he told me? I don't want to get better. I want to get worse. Those were his words. This shit does not leave this room. Not a word of this to the captain or anyone else. We'll give him a couple of days to pull his shit together. I guess I can hold over the report for a few days. Good. Okay, everybody. Nothing but a prank call here. We all got our laughs. Now get back to work. Far north, on the other side of the motorway, the officer quietly hunches with his hand in the motor carriage. The white suede feels luxurious under the touch, and the metal clutch handle so very familiar in your palm. As you tap on the gauge, the indicator pin jerks as if startled. It's in the large orange sector, indicating the engine is warm. Next to the gauge is a red switch, labeled heat. <laughs> yeah, I'm a special boy. I'm a superstar cop. There's no use pressing the heat button. It won't start without the ignition key. Translation. We're not going anywhere right now. Alternative translation. Don't even think you can drive my MC. Alright, time to check out the body, I guess. <laughs> God, the fucking... It's like a nice pattern with the tiles, but it's all fucking cracked and shit. That's tire marks. That's tire tracks, right? Or am I being, like, insane? There are bottles inside. You could pick them up if you had a bag. Rue de saint Guilain 8B. Smells like spoiled meat and curdled dairy. A human being decomposes. Fuck. This kid's ladder is rickety, but still climbable. The ladder's for kids. It wouldn't hold the weight of a grown man. It's not really enough room for a car to get through that fence. Probably drag marks? Yeah, probably. Someone's trying to grow herbs in this greenhouse. Hey kid, why the fuck are you throwing rocks at the corpse? Kuno's got this! The boy throwing rocks at the dead body can't be older than 12. If there ever was such a thing as an ugly kid, then this is it. <laughs> He's almost exquisite in his ugliness. <laughs> like a gremlin. <laughs> oh yeah! Not a goofy, Kuno! Yells the other kid behind the fence. I can press tab to highlight stuff, that's true. Hey kid, a word? Uh, police business. Right in the dick, Kuno! Children ignore you. Love it in the dick. <laughs> oh god, a fin. The boy is sweating profusely. His eyes are like two black holes and his jaw is twitching as if trying to break free from the empire of his body. Kid's high. He must be. Hold on, what does that mean? The kid is obviously yep. high. 
Stop getting high at my crime scene. Jesus. They pay you no heed or pretend not to notice you. Ah. Uh. Shit himself. Oh my Christ. The rake, Kuno. Oh shit, it started snowing. You should throw the rake at him, Kuno. Huh. <laughs> The fuck? Does Kuno know what a rake is? Kuno is not a gardener. <laughs> Kid, you wanna hang out? I'm not a nug. How do you do, fellow kids? Kim, what should we do? We shouldn't do anything. I don't tempt such forces. I see what you mean, but we've got little choice here. Just take it easy. He says with what seems like excessive caution. The language these kids are using. Pure, unfettered id. There will be no reasoning with those creatures. Look, I have questions for you. Alright, entertain the Kuno. Show me what you got. What you got there? What you got, huh? Show me what you got. The body. What do you know about it? Shitload pig. What's your question? Don't tell the pig shit, Kuno. Uh... Pig's choking. He's totally choking. <laughs> Kim, help me out here. What do we want to know? If I were to want to waste my time, which I do not, I would ask them who he is, how he got there, and the usual. The usual being, have you seen anything out of the ordinary? Or have you seen anything suspicious? Do you know who he was? Kuno's fucking. Kuno uses the fucking for target practice. He's trying to hide the fact that he doesn't know. Kuno knows all kinds of shit. Kuno's not a snitch, that's all. Trying to make the Kuno sing into the popo phone. Popo phone? Do you know how it got up there? Probably climbed. Kuno was busy down the road when that shit went down. So you didn't see it happening? You ain't Kuno. Kuno wasn't even in Martinez. Kuno wasn't in Revachol. Kuno wasn't regional. <laughs> oh, okay. Where did you go then? I don't know. Some fucking... He looks around, trying to come up with something. Mesk or... or I don't know. Some other place? Night City? Kuno was in fucking Night City. Uh, uh, cyberpunk? There is no Night City anywhere. <laughs> that sounds like <laughs> the name of a city in some pulp science fiction novel. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> it's a fictional city name. Night City doesn't exist. Why you gotta be riding Kuno's ass? You haven't been where Kuno's been? You haven't been in Kuno's head. I haven't been in Kuno's head, guys. You want to know where Kuno was? You want to know what Kuno's been fucking up to? Don't tell him that, Kuno. It's lame. <laughs> it's not fucking lame. Kuno's building Kuno City. Night City. Rage City. The City of Rage. That's it. And it's not lame. Lame. That's the name of Kuno City, bitch. Get the fuck off Kuno's back. This shit ain't about that. It's impossible to deduce what it is about, at least for the moment. If it's important, it will come up later. What the fuck? Focus on the case. These kids are off their heads. Just a couple of pigs sniffing around in the dirt. That seems pretty fucking suspicious to Kuno. Yeah, you tell the faggoty Kuno. Whoa. Looks like you're a faggoty now. Whatever that means. The suspicious question doesn't really work in antagonistic situations. More on this later. Right now, let's talk about something You're else. You're testing Kuno's patience. Get lost! <laughs> about the crime scene. You kids often play in this yard? Right, pig. This is where Kuno plays with his little wooden choo-choo. What do you want with it? The ladder. Ever climb it? Look at that fucking shit. You're trying to get Kuno killed. So you would say that the ladder is unclimbable? What does Kuno know? Kuno's not a fucking acrobat. The lieutenant takes a quick note in his notebook. It's a trap, Kuno! Don't climb it, Kuno! Don't know. Kipped as gardener used to work there. Kipped is a pejorative term used to describe people of South Seminese or Eri Oppergeit descent. It used to be a common first name among the Eri Oppergeits of Ilmara. Not so much anymore. You mean the young woman by whirling in rags? That gardener? Look, Kuno doesn't explain shit. Kuro just says shit. He looks you in the eye and nods, as if agreeing with himself. Yeah, her. 
What was she doing in the greenhouse in March anyway? What kind of gardening is done in March? You should ask her about that. Yes, it seems suspicious. You don't like things being like that. Suspicious. Yeah, whatever. Kuro doesn't give a shit. I gotta ask, who is Kuno? Kuno's Kuno, pig? The boy points to his chest with both thumbs. It's always Kuno, never I. Clearly the kid's using the third person perspective as a shield. Kuno doesn't do that smart shit. Don't throw that book shit at Kuno. Kuno knows you're lying. Trying to get Kuno hooked on the book. The boy knows he has an addictive personality. Admirable insight for his age. Watch out, Kuno! He's trying to fiddle you! <laughs> He's gonna put his hands on you! The thing behind the fence starts squealing, shrill and violent like a fire alarm. Help! Pigs for Kuno! Help! Rape! The sound gets louder as the child shouts at the windows overlooking the yard. Help! He's got the Kuno help! I'm just gonna leave. Yeah? Get out of here before the Kuno beats the shit out of you. Yeah, that's right. Drag your fat ass out of here, fat boy, before Kuno fucks you. Don't listen. Just go. <laughs> Lucky I don't have my gun, yeah. Alright, we're just gonna go. We're just gonna go. We're gonna be better than those kids. Oh, uh, do I inspect, inspect the body first or talk to the gardener? Let's look at the body. The corpse looks at you with bulging white eyes. The face around them does not look human. It's swollen and ready to burst. His lips are fish-like and his tongue like a ball gag in his mouth. You seem to be holding your breath. Look down. A cargo belt twists his neck at an unnatural angle. The body below appears stiff. It's letting out an ungodly rot. The smell seeps in even through your clenched nostrils. God, what is that? Why is it so bad? Active decay. He took it to throw up, officer. No one is judging. He's about to blow! Cock's gonna blow, Kuno! Oh, shit. That might kill me. <laughs> Just gonna turn away for now. Can we talk to... the other one? Kuno S. Kuno S. Kuno, the pig's getting pretty close to me! Come to snuff my shit out, I think. Looks like it's time for me to go, Kuno. Pigs come to take me in. I just want to ask you some questions. I'm going away for a long, long time, Kuno. Going away for life. What's going on there? Fuck are you trying to pull, pig? Child, converse with me. I come from the woods, Kutavitu. You don't want to go there It is me. Finnish. You don't want to see what I've seen. Don't be traumatizing here. Get the fuck out of here. Jesus Christ. The letter R wears a crown. On the ribbon below, a light above descending. This is the logo of the municipality of Revachol. There's, um, footprints. Yeah. I just noticed that as well as walking away. There are several footprints in the mud, left by work boots. Anywhere from six to twelve pairs have walked here. What kind of boots? Heavy workers' boots with reinforced toes and hobnails all over the yard. Isn't this something an industrial worker would wear? Lieutenant, workers' boot Notice. tracks. Let's get, a, let's get an exact count. What do you think you are? A super detective? You're hungover. These are just dents in the mud. No pattern emerges for the time being. I failed and that hurt my feelings. What kind of build did I go for? 4422. Two, two. And then I took, um, fuck, what's it called? Volition as my um, specialization, but I also failed to get the tire, so I'm very sad. An old call box 
networks with a matrix of push buttons lists all the companies in the East Delta Commerce Center. Uh huh. How bad did I fuck up? <laughs> it's not my fault. The RCM in Martinez. What can I help you with? You sound surprised. We don't see a lot of police around here. That's all. I have some questions for you. Of course. What can I help you with? Tell me, what exactly have you been doing in your greenhouse in March? Well, uh, this might be the last snow we get. At least I hope so. Snow has nutrients in it. Helps everything green up in the spring. At least that's what my grandma always told me. Yes, think about the cute grandma, not the weird snow. <laughs> what nutrients? Disingenuous grandma. Let's do it. Stop looking at her. Look around. What do you see? An interesting That's area. right. And the canal, the bookstore, the harbor gates. This is a great vantage point for keeping an eye on you. Hmm. Keep it to myself for now. Glad to have been of service. Now you know the locals are keeping tabs on you. Of course. Where to? You were racist to her on accident? That doesn't sound like you, man. What do you mean? I'm a bit disoriented. This is Revishall, right? Yes, sir. District of Martinez. She looks around, thinking what else to say. This intersection is called Roundabout North. He knows where we are. He just wants directions. The lieutenant seems uncomfortable with the level of disorientation you are displaying. There's the pier. The Cape Side apartment buildings. West Side. Some moment. more tenements. West Side. Moment. Not a lot, really. What's in the east? The harbor gates. Some kind of commotion, I think. I don't follow the local politics. A fleet store too. What's in the south? Some shops and a bridge. The canal bridge leads to the coast, but it's broken, I think. Some kind of accident, <laughs> probably. It's on the other side of the canal. Just coast. There's a little fishing village there. And a fish market. But that got closed down ages ago. Hold on. I'm actually going to move the chat box. There we go. That way it's not covered up by the HUD. Uh, what's in the West? It's just water. Racism. No, actually, I think they call it the Martinez Inlet. There are some islands in the bay. But they're hard to reach. <laughs> Thanks. That's no all problem. What is this, um, fuck the police business? Excuse me? She's uncomfortable. Maybe you should drop this line of questioning. Uh, the street sign says fuck the police. Oh. Well, I didn't write it there. I'm just sitting here. It's alright, I didn't mean to startle okay. you. Of course. I won't hold you back. Her gloves. You get the feeling that you need them. You have a dead body to deal with after all. Uh, one more thing. Can I borrow your gloves? Sure, keep them. I have another pair. She hands you the rubber gloves with no visible annoyance. Thank you, that was very kind. Plus one interfacing. Sure, why not? Oh, I can level up Savoy Fair. Let's do it. We're getting the tie, lads. We're going to get the tie. We're doing it. We're going to do it. We're going to get the tie this- Oop, hold on. What's that? Bottle of rum has been knocked over. Beautiful. Dark liquid is spilling out. That sugary black rum stain on the counter makes you teary-eyed with joy. It's almost touching how syrupy and sticky it is. How long have you been up already? <laughs> Two hours. An hour would have been bad. Two hours is mystical. You have truly wiped out all trace of yourself if you haven't thought about rum and lemonade yet. 
actually, should I be thinking about this? Looks like drinking hasn't turned out too well for me. Maybe you haven't turned out well for your drinking. <laughs> Have you thought about that? Get a goddamn rum and lemonade to yourself, boy. Or better yet, lick that stain off the counter. I'm not gonna lick it. What happened, man? You used <laughs> to be cool. Go get your boring normal person drink then. Get your drink on and your act together. Fuck you, electrochemistry. A man is sleeping at the table, wearing mud caked boots and rolled down overalls. The back of his shirt reads Wild Pines, encir encircled by a logo with a tree. On the counter, rolled out of his open hand, you see a blister pack of headache medicine. Lieutenant no idea. This. Looks like he works for Wild Pines, the logistics company who owns and operates the harbor. But why is he sleeping during the day? Possibly because there's a strike going on in the harbor. There's not much to do aside from drinking and sleeping. Pick up the, the man does not mind. You probably need them more than he does. I got magnesium pills. You've just picked up some magnesium. This item is stored in the bottom left corner of the screen above your character portrait. Thank you. Alright, tie time. Kim, we're going to get the tie. Oh no, the state of my room. Oh, Kim, you should stay out here. Oh, I'm sorry, Kim. Alright, pants off, shoes off. This fan has two ch- Or has it been consigned okay, there? Okay, if I fail this, I'm gonna cry. You feel as though this- Oh no, it's happening again. You didn't catch it, and now there's a numbness in your left arm. Plus, half your chest. I fucking crit failed. I fucking crit failed. It was a 92% and I crit failed. That means I got two ones. Bro. <laughs> oh man. It's even worse this time. Maybe you should stop trying to catch the tie. No, I want Still the tie. Happening. Oh Definitely no, I'm actually going to fucking time. die. Finally, the stabbing recedes. You could try doing it again to see how painful it gets. I want my fucking tie! Ah! Uh! Lads. Lads, lads, lads. Listen. Would you be... <laughs> I want this fucking tie. Okay? To the point that I'm going willing to save scum. Okay? Are you allowing it? <laughs> Fuck. I wasted a fucking skill point! Is that my fair? <laughs> God damn it! Alright. 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 Yeah, could we ask Kim to get it? Hey Kim, can you get my fucking yes. tie down please? Oh, you won't. You won't get my tie. This is so sad. Kim tries to look at your broken damn belt. I can't get Kim to get it. I'm not the bed trying is to. And not particularly inviting, but it's yours. The sheets look awful. The option to go to sleep becomes available. I mean, if I don't get what was it, 130 real, I can't even fucking sleep here anyway. Have I talked to Kim after meeting him? Hello, Kim. Yes. Let's talk. Tell me about the What case. do you want to know? Literally anything about it. I can't remember a single thing. Maybe you can tell me what you do know to help me narrow it down a bit. I know literally nothing about it. Only what you told me before. Do you want me to brief you? Uh, brief. Yes, that sounds good. Three days ago, the RCM emergencies desk received a report about a security guard who was found hanged in Martinez. An anonymous caller said there was a dead body behind the whirling in rags hostel cafeteria. The cadaver had been there for four days. No one had come to investigate. During that time, 
the victim had been stripped of his belongings. The caller did not identify him, but used the word lynching. There is an ongoing labor dispute between the local dock workers and the logistics company Wild Pines. I was told we should approach the death as part of this dispute. Does the briefing say who the victim was? A security guard or worker of some sort hired by Wild Pines. This was just hearsay for Martinez, of course. We need to find out the truth. Why didn't we know anything about the caller? They didn't identify themselves in any way. The tone was muffled using a device of some sort. The desk could identify neither the caller's age nor sex. Why hide themselves? There's a strong prejudice against involving the RCM in what's seen as union matters. The dock workers' union is the de facto police in Martinez. Now it appears they've started executing too. We cannot allow that. Of course, yes, I understand everything now. Just to be clear, we are police officers. It's our job to find the killer. That's the case. Uncover and arrest the killer. If we're from different precincts, why are we on the same case? I'm afraid you and I are pawns in a, a pissing competition. His disdain is clear. This man would not use such an expression otherwise. What do you mean? You don't know? I assumed you were in on it. You know what I'm on? In on. Retrograde amnesia. <laughs> Better still than an imbecilic cop-off. Cop-off? It's just stupidity. We shouldn't waste any more time on it. If you want my take, ask me after we've inspected the victim. Was oh, there anything else you wanted to know about the case? Have I Good. I think you should know that I can't remember anything. No response. He just arches his brow. He's having trouble processing it. Believing it even. I feel like I must repeat this. I don't remember anything. There was heavy drinking involved. Have you tried concentrating on something other than your personal affairs? There is a sudden, harsh edge to his voice. Like he's tired of hearing about your personal affairs. I'm afraid this is a medical situation. Really? You look fine to me. I'm talking serious, unbelievable damage here. I saw myself in the mirror and had no idea who I was. This psychodrama is unbecoming of an officer. Clearly, he prefers to think you're malingering. He cannot fathom that anyone could drink so much as to retroactively erase their entire life. <laughs> I don't think he's going to accept that I do truly remember nothing. Yeah, I'm just going to drop it. Okay, then. Focus on other people's troubles, not your own. That is a relief. A moment passes. The lieutenant glances at the sports watch on his wrist. I want to talk about you. Me? Yes, you. I don't see how my life is pertinent to the investigation. We'll work better together if we have more rapport. Hmm, that's a fair point. All right, for the good of the investigation, what do you want to know? Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> I am not going to be accidentally racist like our boy Westide. You're wearing glasses. That's correct. You feel a slight urge to put the lieutenant down for this. But you can't quite muster enough testosterone. Glasses are cool, I guess. Are they? They are mostly just cumbersome. You could use a good, normal pair yourself. Tell me a secret about yourself. No. <laughs> oh, okay. The lieutenant nods. <laughs> do you ever talk with yourself? What do you mean? You know, when you're thinking, do you ever have conversations with, like, your brain? I have no idea what you're talking about. The lieutenant's conceptualization skills must be rather <laughs> rudimentary. The lieutenant is a police officer of the old school. His concerns are material and extrinsic. Not internal. But this isn't an old school case. I get it. You're one of those old school detectives. Nod respectfully. So you're saying your brain never just chimes in with advice or warnings or anything? 
I can't say that it does, no. When I need to think, I just use my notebook. The lieutenant produces his small blue notebook and idly thumbs through a few pages. That's where his conversations with himself take place. Ah, I see. We all have our different mediums. His is written. God, it's 11 o'clock already. Holy fuck. I... <sighs> I want to know where he's from. But at the same time, I don't want to be racist. <laughs> Fuck it. That's because I'm half Seolite, or quarter. My father's father was from Seoul. So was my grandmother, but from my mother's side. It's not an interesting topic. What is Seoul? It's a part of the world, officer. A geopolitical entity and a geographic division. I told you it wouldn't be interesting. 11 o'clock? Seoul is a protectionist. Isolationist pan isolary state west of the Insulindian Isola. Actually, it's quite interesting. Some would even say mysterious. You're only making it sound uninteresting. I still want to know more about Seol. You're barking at the wrong tree. I don't speak a word of Seolite. I've never met either one of my grandparents, and I've never been to Seol. I'm a regular of Eva Chaudière. It's all for now. Good. Let's change the subject. Alright. Sorry lads, I'm just responding to messages. Let's get this shit, all right? Let's get this shit. Let's get this shit. Oh. God. So it's only, so each charge is only plus one health. Okay, that's. <laughs> Honestly, I think, I think I'm gonna do it and then try and take the body down just that way if I do fail and it does damage to me it won't fucking kill me good time for an auto save for there me. he still is looking right through you with his white chance. eyes gonna, the I'm body below up, is entirely dedicated to that corpse smell emitting it is all it does now The smell is repulsive. It pushes in from your mouth, more instant and more familiar than anything you expected, more fever than odor. It fills your mind, flushing you from within. Let's just let it out. <laughs> Feel a great force ringing from your stomach. Your body curls and pushes it out, burst by burst. Until a pool of vomit lies under your feet and your throat stings from the stomach acid. Oh God. It's okay, happens to everyone. Keep it. Thank you. The hangover is clearly making this worse for you. You could use some ammonia to clear your head. I think ammonia would help. If you can handle the headache, some officers use it to deal with cadaverine odor. But not you. I can't handle the headache. It's more likely he can handle the smell, unlike you. Okay, where do we get ammonia from? There is Fritz nearby, east of the hostel. They usually have a small apothecary. If they don't... He points to the greenhouse. There's a greenhouse here, and a gardener with a wheelbarrow on the corner of the whirling in rags. If she works here, she might have something for the smell. Hmm. Pretty clever. 
Acquiring ammonia will provide a modifier to the white check. Modifiers make checks easier and allow you to retry them. Okay. Neat. So I have the lieutenant's handkerchief. Excellent. Can't hold them. Okay, no, I was just stupid. There is still. All right. Uh oh, there's a box there. Royal, marvelous. I'm one step closer to paying off my insane debt. This winch mechanism has been oxidizing for some years. Can we take off the boards here? I wonder. An inconspicuous pile of the roofing material, etonite. What is this? It's nothing. Someone just left some roofing material slanted against an old shack. Why am I looking at this pile of the roofing material? Because it's nice and orderly. Well laid pallets. <laughs> Easy on the eyes. It's so obviously concealing a door. Rhythmic pattern calms your mind. Mammals like this stuff. Oh, how good. No, there's more to this. You get this strange feeling. What feeling? Hard to say. It's gone now. Feelings pass, you see. Especially the small ones. All right. Thank you, I guess. Um. Oh, can we open up the trash? This trash container is locked. The sliding lid has a padlock that says, whirling in rags. There's something in there, not necessarily connected to the case, but still. Why am I looking at you, trash container? You're just a trash container. The body is downwind from here. Maybe you prefer the smell of garbage to the smell of death. Lieutenant, what do you think could be in here? Trash, food waste from the cafeteria. They lock these containers to keep the derelicts from flocking in. Could be evidence too. Yes, I feel like there's something in there. What do you mean, feel? It's an extra sensory perception. Whatever is there holds a special significance. It's just a hunch. Maybe someone threw something in there. Mm -hmm. How do we get the lock open? We could try using a pry bar. The one you took from my motor carriage, or... Or... Left or we could ask for a key from the manager of the whirling in rags. He probably has one. I need psychosomatic healing. He might also have information. This is better than the pry bar idea. All right, let's do it. I'm just running around with fucking tools in my hands. I'm gonna put them away. There we go. Let's talk to the manager again. Let's see if we can find anything out. Get a key. Hey, friendo. I still don't have your money, and can I don't I think I'm gonna have you? it. The trash container out back yours? Mine? No, it belongs to the whirling in rags. You fucking dickhead. Thank you for clearing that up. Why do you keep the container locked? Why? To keep the hobos and drunks out. That's why. And the neighbors too. They put their trash there and they don't pay for the garbage company. I thought as much. And are you the only party with access to the trash container? Well, yes. Us and the garbage disposal company. It seems a little callous, doesn't it? Something stirs in you. I wonder what this feeling Prod is. Prod at him and find out. <laughs> doesn't it seem callous to you, guarding even your leftovers from the poor? <laughs> yeah, fuck it, let's do it. Callous? What are you, Kras Mazov? Almost all establishments in Revishol keep their trash locked. The whirling in rags is not special in that regard. Krasmazov, nom de guerre, was an economist and a historical materialist. He was a leading figure on the graph side of the Centennial Revolution, where he headed the nine-day government. Mazov is considered the father of scientific 
communism, scientific Mazovian thought, or Mazovianism. Sci scientific communism. Yum yum, tell me more. He killed himself. Oh! <laughs> oh. Maybe I am Krasmesa. What are we talking about? Was this not about the trash container? <laughs> Whisper and point to the back of my head. What if I am Krasmesa? Yeah, let's return. Was there something you wanted? We need those keys. What for? Mazov? Are you planning to nationalize my trash container? Huh. It concerns the case. Please cooperate. Just bring them back once you're done, please. I've seen something here, here at the Whirling Garter. I think I need to talk. About what it. thing? Yes, not the whole damn union, thank God. Just the nastiest and loudest faction. <laughs> they come here in the evenings. Dumb, unruly types. Think they're big shit. But they're good customers. They place big orders and always pay on time. He hates the Union, but grudgingly recognizes its power over him. So he's directing his frustration at you instead. Retaliate. I'm above gratuitous baiting. We should find out who this Lord Faction is occupying the booth. Lordness means talkative, and we need info. How do we find them? We don't. We have to wait. They'll show up sooner or later. Men get hungry, even striking men. If not today, then they'll be here tomorrow. There are these things called days. You sleep between them. He's saying they'll come after you've slept. Just making clear you got that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Logic. What? By the way, you should come back to this thing-based questionnaire if you see anything interesting in the whirling later. Thank you. Reaction speed. Um... Let's talk to the gardener, I guess. See if we can get some ammonium. Get a hold of a sad song on tape. Yeah, all right. Hello again, officer. How are things? My partner told me you may have some ammonia. Can I have some? Sure. I'm done with it. She takes a small ca capsule out of her breast pocket and hands it to you. Go easy on that stuff. It gave me a terrible headache. I have to run. Well, this is going to be fun. Alright. Ampule of ammonia. There, he still is, looking right through you. God, I still eyes. won't be able to do the it. The body below is Holy entirely shit. dedicated to that corpse smell. Emitting it is all it does now. <laughs> do I want to come back to this? Like, I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. Ah, oh, shit. They go your nose without throwing up. The ammonia yeah. only makes it worse. The combination forces tears out of your guts. You manage to keep it in once. Ah, shit. The second time, not so much. When the vomiting is done, your cheeks are wet with tears. I think I don't want to be a cop anymore. Nor does the win right now. You feel the lieutenant pat your back rhythmically. The weight is reassuring, like a crenel on solid fortification. Pat, pat. I've seen strong men turn themselves inside out for hours. You are facing tough odds here. Alcohol withdrawal makes it considerably harder. I've seen captains puke their guts out. It never gets easier. You never get used to the smell. Every Monday is cadaver day. Throw up. He is such a pro. Throw up. Initial autopsy. Throw up. Baguette. Then drive to the station. Maybe throw up on the way there, if you didn't bag the thing tight enough. Just get drunk, we'll fix everything. Okay. Monday, make sure you bring a handkerchief. <laughs> I think I want to solve something else now. Do without me, I just can't keep it down. No. This is a two-man assignment, because it needs two officers to complete. I need your help. 
He withdraws his hand and looks you in the eye. You need to get your shit together. Okay. We should go talk to the locals. Find something else to do while the wind changes. It's pretty bad right now. Volumetric shit compressor. You've gained a thought. When this dialogue is over, go to your thought cabinet and internalize it for special bonuses and effects. Give it half an hour. Get yourself together. Then come back and have another go. Alright, thank you, King. So. 30 minutes for this. Your shit is apart. And it's rather unbecoming of a cop and a human being. You're supposed to be the opposite of that together compressed in a small area to achieve a solid level of shit compression squeeze your butt cheeks together for 30 minutes do something similar with the two hemispheres of your brain talk to people maybe that will help that's 30 minutes let's do that and then we'll come back to the um lonesome long way home so we can't talk to the kids we can't get the corpse down um i guess we look around Man mutters to himself, accenting the beats as he goes. A simple little cadence. He seems to be making it up as he goes. From another planet. Hey there. What's going on here? It's the jam, my man. He motions towards the sprawl of lorries with a sweeping gesture. What's the jam? It's a traffic jam for the ages. Harbor gates up the street are shut tight. No explanation given. Workers on strike. Scabs <laughs> agitating. All around Fair enough, bro. Thanks for tuning in. I'll probably honest. I'm, dude. You know what? I think if people are around, I'm gonna try and play this Monday and Tuesday as well. So, because I need to play this game more. Meanwhile, we're all stuck here in long-haul limbo for days upon days upon days. Upon days. Easy. No stress. Limbo, huh? So that's where I am. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's official. He too agrees. <laughs> this is the antechamber of the afterlife. So how long have you been here? Feels like forever. Like I was born on this here roundabout and this was all I ever knew. Just me and the metal and the tires, the oil and the fumes and mazout. Extravagantly phrased, but I can roll with it. Yeah, imagine. It's been a whole week already. Behind the love, however, a touch of sorrow. So tell me, what do you need? Tell me more about this strike. Hello, Ivysaur. How are you? It's like, whatever's going on over at the docks. Workers got a blockade set up, making demands. No way in or out. What's the union demanding? Some pretty wild stuff, I hear. Like a giant new power crane and half the company? Half the Forget company? Exactly. Good on them, I guess. I've heard talk there's a company rep in town, too. Like, a strike negotiator type. They know what's up. Precise demands and so on. Ah, yes. From the Wild Pines. We'll meet her soon enough, I'm sure. What do you think the company wants? They want to keep that money flowing in, my man. ka -ching. He doesn't blame them, but he's not on their side. That's for sure. Anything else? Yeah, this ain't really my area of expertise. I just do my job and get paid. I have things to do and places to be. All of us do. All of who? Us lorry drivers. Cam, your nurse. You still hang around here waiting for this mess to end. Most have scurried off somewhere to get drunk or high. Or laid. Not that I blame them, really. Not you? Not my thing. Chasing transient pleasures is a drag these days. I prefer the examined life now. Thinking, reflecting, observing. He glances down the road toward the horizon. A glint of something in his eyes 
Know anything about the dead man? The one hanging behind the hostel? Wait, hold on. The corpse has been there for a week. The strike's been going on. Or the jam has been going on for a week. So... Could it be... Like, people... Like, the, the RCMP wants to claim it like it's a... Um, union matter. Like, the union did that to a guard working for the Pines. But... Could it have been, like, a false flag? Could the company have done it to make it look like the union killed the guy? Oops, someone's knocking. Hold on. Alright. <laughs> My dinner's ready. So I'm going to finish up this convo, and then I think I'm going to head off and end stream. Uh, Alright, let's ask him about the corpse. That's true, the corpse has been turning to jam for a week. He ain't one of us drivers. I know that. All accounted for. Otherwise, I haven't really asked about that. Been wasting time right here. Keep him busy. It's easy to see he's telling the truth. He's kept his nose out of the dark stuff. Busy with what? Analyzing the fundamental structural and psychological conditions of being stranded in the midst of a sea of motor lorries and their sad, despondent chauffeurs. And your conclusion? A sense of surprise there ain't more bodies hanging from more trees. <laughs> uh, what are you hauling anyway? Oh, high-grade narcotics, illegal firearms, stuff like that. Time to arrest him. Relax. He's merely joking. <laughs> Wicked. I've always wanted a friend in the underworld. Ha! No, I'm joking, my man. Fowl runs a nice, clean business. This hall of cargo is mostly sporting goods. You know, tracksuits and that kind of I'm thing. I'm not going to arrest an innocent man! They usually get shipped to Grad in the Occident. Though we've been making headway in the Il Moran market lately. That's your machine behind you? This rockin' beauty. Sure is. Like a rash you can't get rid of. <laughs> He did interested in heavy-duty cargo machinery? <laughs> Do not book him. No. He's a good man. He's just a bit of a hippie. A motor lorry, also called a camion, on Caillou and neighboring islands. This one looks roughed up enough to be some sort of found rust bucket. Maybe the A6? Honestly, I'd believe that, yeah, tracksuits with a gangster uniform and all the revachol. Because it feels... It's like... A mix of French and Russian and or like Ukrainian and it's like sorry French and Finnish probably more accurately and yeah it's probably Victor Zakayev was one you're right he does that a foul in the foul in the a6 you got there good eye my man yup she's an old one but reliable me and her spent a long time together there it is again a little touch of sadness beneath his cool. He thinks he spent too long in this lorry. Can I get one of those Fallon tracksuits you're hauling? We're pals and all, but I can't just freely hand out the merchandise. The bosses won't be happy. Yeah, that's fair. Right, I have another question. The man taps his fingers rhythmically against his arm. What do I see in his eyes? Ease into it. Don't go too far. This seems like a personal matter. Hey, tell me. Spill the beans. What's troubling you? Man, nothing's troubling me. Just the usual Loreman tropes and hopes. The road and the rhymes. This jam ain't helping either. He looks around. That all the beans you got, Tommy? Damn. It really is hard to talk. Man to man. Damn straight. Don't be a stranger. Gives you a salute with two fingers. Tommy's a, Tommy's a bro. Tommy's a bro as well. So far, anyway. Um. God, the fucking sidewalk is overgrown. Some great tectonic force has cracked the pavement like an eggshell. I don't believe the worn you. The and beaten wooden planks of the bench do not look overly comforting. Hmm. We can sit on benches after we've solved the murder. You can revisit the bench. Okay. I have to go eat. Uh, so, thank you all.
for tuning in. Uh, I Again, I may play Monday or Tuesday. I'm not sure yet. Probably Tuesday. Um, but yes, thank you all for tuning in. The game is great. I need to play properly. Smile. I know, right? Wow, crazy. But yeah, so... I will see you all next time. Have a good one, gamers.